start in a few minutes waiting for people to join us. I have the luxury of having my wife just sit at the piano and play, and I get to drink it in. And so as you just begin to join us, I see a few people commenting that they're coming online, and it's good to see you all. The screen's too far away, so I wish I could read your names. But it's good to see you. Welcome. We're going to be starting in a few minutes. Welcome to the living room. This is our living room. This is where we live. And out of Psalm 139 tonight, so you might want to find your way over there. If you've got the children with you, help them find their place in the Bible. They can join in. They can sing. We're going to be singing a, a new song, maybe to some of you, as we begin this morning. It's not really that new of a song, but we as a church body, we don't sing it that often. We sing it once in a while, but not that often. And then as the night goes on, we'll get into more familiar tunes that you can just worship with us. So we'll just give a few more minutes here as people join us. You might want to talk with one another, greet one another. You can probably see who's already joined. Why don't you welcome each other into our living room as you sit in your living room tonight. We're so glad that you're joining us. this to all of us tonight. I've been reminding myself over and over recently that, you know, Jesus understands everything that we're going through. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, it says, 
For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with all of our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted or tested as we are, yet he didn't give in to sin. So what does that mean for you and me tonight as we just spend this time together? It means Jesus understands what you're going through right now. He understands your struggles. He understands your frustrations. He understands all of those things. And tonight would be a good night to just unpack all of that in the presence of the Lord. Come into his presence tonight and, and just let him know that you know he knows exactly what's going on in your lives. You can call out to him. You can ask your questions. You can share your concerns. You can alleviate your fears in the presence of the Lord as we worship here together right in your own home there. I want to begin tonight by asking you to join Joan and me to pray for one of our dear friends. Her name's Patty Peglo. She's in the hospital right now. She's fighting for her life. She's got pneumonia and she's tried to kick it a couple of times and it seems to ebb and flow with her. But it's a very serious condition for her right now. So we'd like to take a few moments as we begin tonight to just lift Patty Peglo up to you. And then this afternoon, Doug and Diane Tush got in touch with Pastor Jeff. And they sent him an email and they, they asked if we would pray for DJ, their son. He was in contact and exposed to COVID-19 and he's begun the cough and, and uh, sore throat. He doesn't have a fever quite yet. He's self-quarantining at home with his wife and two children. And so we're going to just begin tonight by lifting them up in prayer. And let me just say this, that as always, you can contact us, Joan and I, or the elders, or the deacons, or the rest of the pastors. You can go to our website, and, and if you've got prayer concerns, if you've got things going on in your life right now where, where you just want someone to join you in prayer, we are so available and so willing to do that. Maybe it's not just for you, but maybe it's like Doug and Diane. It's for their son, DJ. They want prayer for him. You can do that, and we'll just join you in prayer. We'll make sure others join us. We have a prayer ministry at Zion Fellowship. We, we have people that are just all the time interceding and helping us. And so let's pray right now. Father, we just lift Patty Peglo to you. Lord, as she wrestles and she fights against this pneumonia, Lord, we're asking that you would just clear her lungs, that you would strengthen her body in the midst of her battle for wellness. Lord, give the doctors wisdom and understanding what's going on with her body. But Lord, we're looking for a divine intervention. We're asking, God, that you would move right into that hospital room tonight, that you would just touch Patty miraculously, supernaturally, that her lungs would begin to gain air her body would begin to gain strength in the midst of her battle. Lord, she's your daughter. She belongs to you. She knows you so intimately and so well. Lord, remind her tonight that you've not left her. You've not forsaken her in the midst of this battle, but you're going to bring her all the way through. And Lord, we also join with Doug and Diane as we lift up their son, DJ, to you. Father, we pray that you would just cause this COVID-19 virus in his body to dry up. That as quickly as it came, Lord, we're asking that it would just as quickly go. And that, Father, you would just heal him. That you would keep his wife and children free and safe from this virus. That it would not affect their entire home. Lord, as we think about tonight, as we think about as the sun goes down, Passover will begin. Lord, we're asking that you would just cause supernatural healing to be released not only over Patty's life and DJ's life, but over all of our lives. That there would be a literal passing over. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. I believe that we're living in very interesting times. And I know that many of us are praying and we're asking God to send a spiritual awakening. And whenever we start praying that way, whenever we start asking for revival and we start asking for spiritual awakening, the thing that I've realized in my years as a follower of Jesus, that he begins with his own people. And as we begin to prepare ourselves for this Passover season, as we look towards Good Friday and then 
Sunday morning when we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's be reminded of 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. It says, if my people, and this is what we're doing tonight, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There, there needs to be a turning in the body of Christ, a turning away from sin, a repentance for things that are contrary to the will and the ways of God. He says, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive them their sin and I'll heal their land. Listen, how many of you agree with me that we want God to heal our land and, and we want God to turn back COVID-19? But we also want to see a spiritual awakening. I don't know about you, I do. I want to see a spiritual awakening. During this time of pressure, I believe more and more people are starting to reach out to God. People that maybe weren't reaching out to God before this crisis. So as we begin to pray tonight, we're going to be asking God to release a spiritual awakening, to open the eyes, to take the blinders off of people's eyes, that they might realize how good God is and how much He loves them. But it begins with us. He says, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves. See, Passover is not only a time of remembrance, but it's also a time where the Jewish people search their hearts to see if there's anything in their life that is that is needed to be rid of anything in their lives that is contrary to the will and the way of God things that are unbecoming of people who are called by God's name and this Passover this particular Passover is unique unique in the sense that the circumstances that we find ourselves in tonight and for the next couple of weeks are are actually we're going to be celebrating Passover the way God intended His people to celebrate Passover, the way He instructed the Israelites to observe the Passover. He said, do it in your homes. Do it as a family group. Do it behind closed doors. That's what we're doing tonight. We're, we're gathering as families. We're in our homes. We're looking to the Lord. We're doing it behind closed doors. You know, Jesus just before he was crucified, told his disciples in Luke chapter 22, verse 19, that whenever you gather like this, do this in remembrance of me. You'll recall that what they were doing in the upper room, just moments before his arrest, which led to his trial, which led to his crucifixion after severe beating, which eventually we realize led to the resurrection and now his ascension to the right hand of the Father. They were in the upper room and they were sharing the Passover meal. And years later, the Apostle Paul gave us a deeper revelation of what Passover means to us today as believers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 and 8, he says this, Cleanse out the old leaven. That's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're going to do tonight. Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened for Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed let us therefore celebrate the festival not with old leaven the leaven of malice and evil but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth let me put it simply this way God wants us to always remember the greatest story ever told it's not just the exodus it's the gospel the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for each and every one of us so that we might be saved from sin, that we might be reconciled back to God and brought back into rich relationship with Him. As we remember that tonight, would you, along with me, just relish the idea of being His son or being His daughter? A restored relationship with God. He wants us to remember that He is the one who delivered us from sin. He delivered us from our bondage, just like He delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. He wants us to remember that He loves us. John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That He didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world. He came to liberate us from sin and death. 
So here's just a couple of ideas. If you've never celebrated the Passover, you've never done a Seder, you've never gone that full in, we encourage you. There's a lot of resources you can find if you want to do that as a family, seeing that we're all shut in and we're all in our homes. But here's a couple of things that I want to ask you to, to consider doing. The first one has to do with removing the leaven from your home. In, in Jewish tradition, the day before Passover, they go throughout the house and they cleanse the house. They, they remove from the home any leaven, the leaven, the, the substance that causes the, ri the rising of the dough or the, the fermenting of the dough. They actually go through and they clean out every corner of the house to, to make sure that there's no leaven left as Passover begins. And the Bible all often talks about leaven symbolically in, in the context of sin. And the command to remove leaven from our homes is designed to teach us that it's important for us as believers to examine our hearts. This should be a time of introspection as we move towards Good Friday. Tonight we're going to be asking God, search my heart, God. See if there's anything in me that is contrary to your ways and your will. And lead me into a pathway of everlasting life. Tonight I'm asking you to, to actually pray that way, to ask God to begin the search right now, to come as the light of the world and to, to search the recesses of your heart, every corner of your heart, that we might remove the leaven that's there. This is a time for us as the church to get serious about repentance, about removing sin in our lives so that we might be pure and holy. We're going to be singing about that tonight. Joan's going to lead us in some powerful songs of repentance and, and songs of cleansing. And so let's get ready for that. And then secondly, I'd, I'd ask you to do this with your family, especially with your children. Review the Exodus story. You can find it in Exodus chapter 12. You know, for the Jew, it's the story of, of God's deliverance from bondage out of Egypt and into the promised land. And so as we begin to review that story, some of the things that you might begin to apply into your life this Passover season is, and talk to your kids about this, the importance of standing on the promises of God. We've been studying that as a church, that His divine promises have given us everything we need for life and godliness. His power and His promises, they work together. It's time again to remind ourselves, let's stand on the promises of God. He's faithful and He's true. In the midst of this extreme opposition, in this extreme tension. Go to the promises of God. Maybe you want to do that right now. And I thought maybe you want to consider some of the promises that, that you are holding on to in your life. And maybe take a piece of chalk and go outside if you have a, a paved driveway and write those promises down, the scripture verses. and Do that this Passover season. It also teaches us that in the midst of plagues, in the midst of difficulties, in the trials of life, God is always with his people. Listen, folks, I know this is hard, but God's not left us. He's not abandoned us. He's not abandoned the United States. He's not abandoned the world. In fact, he's preparing the world. He's preparing you and I for his coming. Most importantly, it teaches us that our own personal salvation in Jesus Christ is super, super important. So tonight... As Passover is, is beginning, it's going to be when the sun goes down. That's, that's the Jewish tradition. When the sun goes down, Passover begins. We're just a few, about a half an hour away from the sun going down. Let me read Psalm 139, 23 through 24, just to get us focused and zeroed in. We're going to make it a prayer, and then Jones just going to take us off into worship tonight. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Will you pray that with me tonight just before we go into worship? Come on. Search me, O God. God, know what's in my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And Holy Spirit, we are asking tonight, point out anything in me that offends you and then lead me along into the path of everlasting life. All right, Jim, let's 
worship.
us by name. He knows when you sit down, when you rise up. He understands your thoughts sometimes even before you understand. And he comprehends the path that I'm choosing. By lying down, he's acquainted with all of my ways. Aren't you glad? Let the 
longing of your heart be God, my heart, let my heart be pure before you. A heart that follows heart after you. Because you know me. You've searched me. You've known my ways. You know when I'm sitting down. You know when I'm rising up. You know all about me. You're acquainted with my ways. Lord, I want my heart to be pure. Holy. Therefore, I will praise you. 
for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. See, God knows you. And through his son and through the shed blood of Calvary, the shedding of blood, the Lamb of God brought forgiveness of sin to you and I. And he knows you. He formed you in your mother's womb. Think about the intimacy of that reality, that revelation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made tonight. Marvelous are the works of God. Marvelous is His work in you. The way has been made. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Sin and death no longer has claim on your life. This Passover season, let's embrace the reality of that truth as never before. As we've cleansed the, the, the hearts, our houses, of the leaven, of the sin of our lives, now let us live in the reality of of restored relationship with God. Live in the reality of how well God knows you. The intimacy of verses 13 and 14 in Psalm 139. Just, just drink it in tonight.
I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. not hidden from you when I was made in secret skillfully wrought in the lower parts of the earth your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they were written or my days were ordained by you God the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them now here's what I want you to hear verses 17 and 18 how precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I want you to realize tonight that no matter how difficult this has become, no matter how tough it is, right now, the Lord has precious thoughts about you. He says, the sum of them are so great that if I would count them, their numbers, the numbers of thoughts that God has about you are as many as you would find sand on a seashore. That's amazing that God thinks about you. He thinks about me that much. And when you awake, it says he's still there. He doesn't move. He's so consistent. As the sun's going down and traditionally what's happening in many Jewish homes right now and in some Christian homes, they're preparing for the Seder, the Passover meal. Joan and I have decided that tonight what we're going to do is we're going to take communion. Now I know maybe some of you are saying, ah, we didn't know prepared for that. That's okay. Do it in your time. This is just something I wanted to do with Joan, my wife, as we're just setting apart this house in a fresh way as a sanctuary unto the Lord. We do this in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. And so as we're signing off and as Passover is beginning, we encourage you in your homes to continue to worship the Lord, to 
maybe take a moment and have communion together. It's been our joy, it's been our privilege to worship with you tonight. We're so glad you joined us. We're so glad you were a part of our time. Why don't you say goodbye to one another, signing off, or maybe you can continue the conversations if you want in another venue. But it's been our joy and our privilege to be with you tonight. It's been so much fun worshiping the Lord together in our homes like this. I'm so privileged that I have such a talented wife that she can just take us into the realm of glory and we can worship the Lord. Here we go. Let's let this be our closing worship song. Thank you.